Because I'm not very good at introductions, um, she'll do it herself. Oh my god. Alright, hi guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> do I say Liv Spargo or Olivia Spargo? What's your Instagram? Liv Spargo. Oh, then that. Okay, this is Liv Spargo. Um, I have Phoebe, I have Phoebe bikini. bikini. Not a pro yet. Not a pro, but to be continued. Trying to get to that status. <laughs> this is one gym, bodybuilding gym. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm here with Olivia Sprago. We are at One Gym and today we're going to be taking you through a few of our go-to glute exercises. We'll just take you through what we do on like a weekly basis on leg day, glute day. Um, some of our favorite movements, what we like to do and um, yeah, just go from there. We'll give you our, a few like tips and tricks as well for what we found helps us get the best mind-to-muscle connection and what you can utilize into your training program. So continue watching and follow along. Alright, so what are you doing here? So prior to all my leg days, I just do some like pre-firing exercises just to help like get the glutes pre-firing. So I do some like side hip abductions, some kickbacks, just to work all angles of the glutes so that I can actually go into my exercises and the mind muscle connections kind of already been established. Nice. Start of my leg day, I find it helps engage the glutes a little bit more. It's a bit more of a warm up exercise for me. So we're gonna do this, um, go through it nice and controlled, smooth reps, making sure we keep constant tension of the muscle the whole time. So I'm gonna show you now how we're gonna do it. when you're doing a glute cable kickback, a lot of mistakes I see with clients as well is they bring their leg that's attached, they bring it too far forward. When you bring this leg too far forward, you actually lose contraction of the glute medius. So you're better off, instead of thinking it as like a full range of motion, kind of think of it as like a half rep. As you'll see in my reps, I kind of like to stop around there instead of bringing my leg all the way forward because that's when the glute will lose contraction. Also really important, just add it like a tempo squeeze when the glutes at peak contraction at the top. So hold it there. This will also help you develop that better mind to muscle connection. Have the foot on a slight angle pointed outwards instead of directly pointed back. Again, it will just help elongate that muscle. Alright, we're going to go into Smith Machine hip thrust. So I do prefer the Smith Machine over using a standard barbell for a Smith for a hip thrust. Just because I feel like I can isolate the glutes a little bit more. So a few tips we're doing, we do add a resistance band just around our knees to hold. So when you've got that resistance band around your knees, you want to make sure you're pushing your knees outwards. That way you're just engaging more abductors. You'll see we've also added some weight plates there just to increase the range of motion because on some people's Smith machine, like our one, it does it actually stops when you try and go all the way to the bottom. So just to increase the range of motion, we want to elevate our feet. So we put our feet on three weight plates. So knowledgeable. Like I said, resistance band around your knees, making sure your knees are pushing outwards against it so we can engage the abductors. I do keep a weight belt on literally just to prevent any form of like torso engagement, keeping my core tight. Have your feet elevated just to increase the range of motion. We're doing six to eight reps, making sure we're holding each rep at the top of glutes to repeat contraction for about two to three seconds just to help further engage that mind to muscle connection. Um, sometimes I do also like to hold my glutes, this is personal preference. I find if you hold like the muscle that is, you're supposed to be working, you actually, it helps get your mind activated a little bit more to it as well. Knee 
these out. someone trains one way doesn't mean it's suitable for you like everyone as whatever exercise you get a beta mind to muscle connection with stick with it if your hip thrusts are better on a barbell than a Smith machine use a barbell if it's better on a machine use a machine no exercise is necessarily right or wrong as long as your form is not absolutely horrendous then you'll be able to get some form of hypertrophy response from it good shit superset with some dumbbell walking lunges. I don't mind supersetting if it's going to be different muscle groups. So obviously hip thrusts, glutes, walking lunges are going to be quad but also glute focused. So the way I make them a little bit more glute focused is just by angling the torso slightly forward and also making the step a little bit larger so I can get a bigger range of motion and really elongate that glute. If I wanted to be more quad dominant I would have a closer stance but you'll see I do like to step a little bit further away to get more glute engagement. But I also like supersets for the purpose of makes the session not go for as long. And also while you're dieting, it does actually help to increase your heart rate, which increases your energy expenditure. So you end up burning more calories, which is a win-win. standing abductions now we can either use two machines here we can use either the seated hip abductions or we can use the standing i do prefer the standing just because i can get more range of motion through my hips and that way i can get more glute activation and also allows me to sit more into the glute medius too so when i am sitting up on this machine i would rather go a little bit lighter this is kind of one of those exercises where you have to just like totally get rid of your ego, don't worry about what everyone else is doing. If you go a little bit lighter, you usually can aim for a higher rep range. Higher rep ranges are a little bit more optimal for hypertrophy purposes anyways. I do like to hold the handles up a bit more. This does allow me to actually sit further back into the glutes and actually really stretch out as opposed to holding downwards because if I am holding lower on the machine, it's gonna make me engage more quads. I do like to point my toes out slightly so it just helps to work a little bit more of that glute ham tie-in and that inner hamstring. As well with exercises like abductions and hamstring curl, I do like to work in a closer proximity to failure. They are smaller muscle groups as opposed to doing like your bigger compounds like a hip thrust, a squat or a deadlift. Exercises like that I'd probably work in like the 8 to 9 rep range for an RP scale. With exercises that are more isolating like a hamstring curl and an abduction machine, I will work in that closer 9 to 10 RP range. 
We've been training now for 70 minutes. And I think we're both, we're both done. We're over it. Why is this blurry? We are over it. But we're gonna finish off with some leg press. I'm just gonna do four sets, 15 to 20 reps. I'm adding 40 kilos. It's just a lot of time under tension. I wear my weight belt as well. I wear my weight belt my whole leg session just because it takes my core out of it helps me actually engage the muscles as opposed to like i don't want my core to give out before my quads for example oh my god this guy is walking on the treadmill with his baby wrapped on him that is really cute if i ever had a kid i would wear my baby too so when we're doing this we actually want to get as close as possible to your leg press i prefer a leg press that because you know how there's the ones where you can like lay on your back I prefer these, you can get a little bit more quad engagement, especially if you want it to be glute, or like quad focused as opposed to glute focused. The ones where you're on your back, it's better if you're doing like a sumo stance to engage glutes, quads, hammies. This one is primarily, literally all quads. Have a really close stance, move the seat as far forward as possible. If your gym doesn't have this and you want it to be really um, quad focused, I'd recommend doing actually a hack squat over a leg press. I mean, they both have benefits, but this is my go-to machine. We just want to push outwards. We want constant tension, so we're going to be doing 15 to 20 reps, working in a closer proximity to failure towards the last few reps. So that is a pretty much the end of my session. I do always finish off with some calf raises, whether it is programmed or not, just because you can't ever skip training some calves. Are we like done? Almost. Almost. I'm gonna do one as well. Oh my God, look at my cheap bridge. So now you need to do this. But... All right, let's get to it. I'm gonna go a bit of a wider stance just to get a little bit more glute engagement rather than quad. Yep. So as you guys can see, when she actually puts her feet a little bit wider, she points her toes out a little bit. What this does is this will actually engage more abductor and it'll also engage more inner thigh and her hammies. When her, like if your feet were closer like mine were and your toes would be pointed obviously more forwards, that's when you're literally just gonna engage all this more muscle. knee flexion. Oh, more quad. More quad, like right? Yeah, definitely prefer it this way. <laughs> Okay, so our leg day today pretty much consisted of glutes, hammies, and a little bit of quads. As you can see, as bikini athletes, and especially for myself right now, because I am so close to comp, I don't really do heavy compounds like squats, deadlifts. There is that whole debate on whether it thickens your waist or not. I'm not going to get into it. It is controversial, and I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to make anyone angry, so... My, a lot of my exercises are really like isolation based and working on specific muscle groups i.e doing like a glute cable kickback and doing like a barbell hip thrust as opposed to doing like a sumo deadlift which could activate your glutes hammies and your quads holistically so that was pretty much my training session we did end up training for it was around like 80 minutes our rest periods really depend because we were filming it was obviously a longer session usually like don't train for this long I don't want people to think that the longer you train, the better a lot of the time that isn't the case. In regards to rest periods for the general person, I like what and what I say to my clients is rest until you're almost recovered. You don't want to rest too long where you've like lost your pump, but you also don't want to rest not long enough where you can't then reach the prescribed rep range for the next set. So I say for isolation based exercises like your if you're doing upper body dumbbell side raises, front raises then i'd say about 45 seconds to maximum 60 seconds and make sure the heart rate and the intensity is still up there and for more of your compounds so if you are doing things like squats deadlifts or even like just a shoulder press that were barbell hip thrust this is where i would range between the 60 seconds to 90 second mark if you're like a power lifter look i'm not even going to get into that because i don't really do any strength-based training they a lot of the time they can actually rest up to like three minutes 
So I do have a high carb day. I am, oh my God, tomorrow is peak week, I think. Where's Thursday? Tomorrow is peak week Eve. <laughs> so what does that make me? Nine days out of nationals. And then when I get back from nationals, I have a week and then I have, I'm flying out to Japan for the Amateur Olympia. So post, I'd say is a high carb day, but pre-workout I had 260 grams of basmati rice, 90 grams of chicken. Post-workout meal I had 260 grams of basmati white rice. This is cooked weight. And the chicken's raw weight, I had 90 grams of chicken breast. No flavoring, just pink Himalayan salt. Oh, and a bit of chicken salt, so I guess that's flavoring, seasoning. And pre-workout, always good to have a little bit of carbs, a little bit of protein, just to help elevate that muscle protein synthesis. Now, muscle protein synthesis is actually elevated for up to 90 minutes post-workout, so I do try to get that meal in as quick as possible. Another thing, post-workout, this is what I'm holding here, I do have a scoop of, one scoop of BCAAs. I had the great flavor today, and I have a scoop of creatine. I also have a scoop of glutamine, but I just ran out, so I have to go get some more. I use the Uncensored brand that I'm sponsored by them. They sponsored me my whole entire prep. And this is what I've been recommending to all my clients as well who have personally really enjoyed it. So use Tabby 10, you'll get a discount on their supplements. But Great Flavor is my favorite in the BCAAs. I don't take any pre-workouts, but if I do, I will have their Hype pre-workout in the pineapple, which is quite nice. If you're wanting to give it a try, I can even attach the link to their website below. This is just a quick update. I haven't really updated in between comp, I know, because life is a little bit hectic and I'm just honestly just having my head down trying to focus and get, because the last few weeks have been a little bit tough. So I'm just trying to focus and get through it. But I'll be sure to update you and give you like a guys a nationals vlog and then a Japan vlog. I can't wait. But thanks for watching. I'm not sure. This is like the first time I've done like an actual training video on youtube so if you do enjoy it let me know i'm more than happy to go more in depth in regards to my training because i never actually really show it on here it's more of like my vlogs my daily daily life stuff but let me know and i'm more than happy to whatever makes you guys happy then i'm happy